Welcome everybody to episode number 71 of Gaming Culture Radio. I'm your host Tyler, joined as always by our three co-hosts. Let's start with Graham. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's um, Yeah, it was a great day. Not too much going on. Played some video games, but overall I'm doing good. How's the rest of the crew doing? Oh, good. Let's go head on over to Eugene. How are you doing today? I am full of turkey and stuffing and cranberry sauce and green bean casserole, and amongst other things. Yeah, and finally, <laughs> uh, Steve, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, but my wallet is hurting. The Black yeah. Friday deals were too good to pass up. So what'd you get? Well, I, I went ahead and got a 4K TV <laughs> Whoa. and a Xbox yeah. One X, you know, because I had nice. to have something to show it off. <laughs> nice, nice. Yep, so. And the One X is definitely a great thing to show off the the power of the 4K and with HDR. Yeah. Yeah. So, now I'm the odd man out, so I guess I gotta get one now. You do. So you happy so far with it? Oh, I love it. I I didn't. I was worried. I thought I was. I wasn't quite sold on like the power of the 4K TV until I got it. And then I was even playing like NHL, which isn't a 4K game. And wow, it it is uh, beautiful. Mm-hmm. And then the new life to all your games, eh? Yeah. Good. All right, so as always, you can uh, keep up on all the gaming news by heading over to culturegaming.com. Uh, we are the official podcast of that uh, website. So again, culturegaming.com for all the latest in your gaming news. And uh, make sure you join our group on Facebook. Just head on over there and look up the uh, Gaming Culture Radio forums. And join in the conversation there. If you submit questions, then we read them on the show. You're automatically entered for our monthly giveaways. Uh, also, we're going to be doing our holiday giveaways again. So next week, we'll start talking about that. And we'll have giveaways every single week, every single episode throughout December. And they, I believe, as based on what we talked about, they're going to get a little better as we go. So uh, ending with a pretty good one, I believe, Christmas week. So that'll be awesome. And we look forward to giving all that stuff away and seeing what questions you guys all send in from the community. So with that said, we're going to cover our very few news items that we have. But uh, we do have a few, so let's jump in. First up, if you sign up before December 1st, you'll automatically be granted access to the next round of Sea of Thieves tests. Uh, the game officially releases in early 2018, so one of your last chances is to get to try out the game and see if if you uh, if it's for you. Uh, Eugene, you said you found that the game will be skipping the certification process, correct? Yeah, I saw the news today that uh, Microsoft actually uh, gave a pass on this game for certification, so that means no kind of final testing from the Microsoft team, which kind of kind of worries me a little bit that there may be issues uh, whenever the game launches. How do you guys feel about that? I'm actually okay with it because I think throughout all the alphas, they're getting to see what bugs exist and don't, and they're kind of fixing them as they go. And, and all the alphas are taking place on Xbox One. So I, I'm okay with it. Anybody not yeah. okay with it? No, I'm fine with it. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with it. And the fact say they keep doing all these testing so it seems like they're really beating a dead horse to get all these bugs out so hopefully the fans are writing in and they're listening to the fans and they're using this to perfect the game yeah i just want the game to come out already i'm, I'm kind of ready for it and i think it'll be a nice change of pace type game from all the shooters that we've seen this fall so looking forward to that uh next up if you're still playing Battlefield 1, speaking of shooters, the Turning Tides DLC will be available to premium pass members starting on December 11th, and I believe it's two weeks after that that it becomes available to everyone else that buys it individually. So you also, I believe I saw, get to try out the first two DLCs for free, and it might be next weekend that that's happening. I don't have the exact dates, but you will get to try out those to see if you like them. So points if you're interested in buying them in call of duty world war ii are now live and you can spend up to a hundred dollars in a single transaction if you want to those points are used to buy supply drops for multiplayer and zombies so i think i'm the only one here who's tried the game really like it it's actually a lot of fun it's most fun i've had call of duty in years but i'm not big on this whole like buying the points to get loot crates where's the where's the outrage i'm not outraged i'm not gonna like cry and stomp my foot but you know, I just, I I don't like it, so I don't buy it. It's that simple, and it's kind of how it should be for everybody else, I think. But on that note, a Wall Street analyst says that gamers aren't overcharged, they're undercharged. And this is coming from Evan Wingren, a financial analyst for KeyBank Capital Markets, 
who says, quote, gamers aren't overcharged, they're undercharged. This saga has been a perfect storm for overreaction. He's speaking about Battlefront 2 here. As it involves EA, Star Wars, Reddit, and certain purist gaming journalists slash outlets who dislike microtransactions, end quote. Your thoughts, guys? I agree. Um, I think the amount of money that goes into these games to make, like, your Gears of War, especially your big name title, your AAA titles, is a lot. And games haven't gone up in price in, what is it, like 10, 15 years now? They've been stuck at 60. And even then, like right before that, it was 50 for who knows how long. So I'm okay with a, a bit of microtransactions if it means uh, my game stay at 60. Yeah, I'm the same. And not not just the cost of developing the game, but in this case, the cost of buying the, the Star Wars license. For True. Year. That's a lot of money yeah. in itself. So I think there's a uh, lot of fees that people don't know about. Yeah, there's a lot of upfront money paid to make these things. And. The, they also talked about kind of the average cost per hour of certain types of entertainment. And if you rent a movie, the average cost per hour is like 80 cents. Whereas for gaming right now, and it's based on a certain number of hours played, but for multiplayer, multiplayer shooters, that tends to be higher. The average cost was like 30 cents an hour. So it's much, much lower than what you're paying for a movie or for TV was in between at like 60. So because of the cost of cable and all that good stuff so based on that we're getting a pretty good deal gaming wise and again you don't have to buy the stuff does it sometimes put you at a little bit of a disadvantage maybe but it's still your choice whether or not to buy it any other thought? I, I think yeah i ahead. think we're i think we're very spoiled uh mm -hmm. nowadays when it comes to gaming and uh I, I think some people expect too much and i i'm i'm almost certain that i don't know how they're doing right now i know uh, you're about to talk about sales but uh i have a strong feeling that uh ea is going to lose some money out of this and and really uh gamers we we did it to ourselves and i, I know that there's a lot of uh um, i know that's an unpopular opinion and people have their opinions about it but uh, i feel that the reaction was pretty over dramatic uh, in this sense, I, I understand that, you know, some people are outraged uh, about the microtransactions, but personally, it doesn't affect me. Like, kind of like you were saying, Tyler, if you don't like it, you know, don't buy it. Um, as a whole, I don't, I don't think it affects everyone. So should be a very small population to who's actually upset about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Graham, anything or ready to go? I agree with what you guys are saying. Like, okay. people do complain but the overall, yes, like we'd rather keep the prices games lower. So people doing these micro transactions, this is how they make their money and stuff like that. So do you want games overall be more expensive for everyone, or do you want the people who pay the micro transactions just to pay it and support the games that they love? Yeah, and, and on that point, Graham, just kind of my last thing on this: that these tentpole games like Battlefront and like Battlefield and like Call of Duty. They're the ones that give these publishers and these development companies the bankroll to take chances on other types of games. Because they rely on these games to make them a ton of money. Right? So, but by, by getting that money, they invest it back into your, you know, games like Unravel from EA standpoint. You know, where they may not have done that. So, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I think, uh, I think gamers are missing the forest for the trees here. Where, like you were talking about, uh, they invest that money into the other studios. And I think we're at, like, a great point in time right now. Think of how many $60 games that came out in, like, the last month or two were just on sale for 30 bucks or sometimes 35 Like, one month after release, they were on sale for $30. And we're complaining about a little bit of microtransactions. I, I, think, I think this is the wrong thing to be complaining about. Yeah. As I've said many times on the show, there are people out there who just aren't happy unless they aren't happy. So it's just more of that. But let's wrap up news with this. Uh, speaking of Star Wars Battlefront 2, uh, sales are down in general. I got the UK numbers. You, uh, Eugene, you said you saw US numbers too that were down. But in the UK, it's specifically down 61% in launch week compared to Battlefront 1. And you got to think this is a direct reaction to the whole microtransaction debacle. I think so. It seemed to have like scared people away and people were like, oh, I don't know, and all this stuff. So they're catching up on this hype and people complaining and now they're afraid. Yeah. Well, the good, right. Right. Yeah, go ahead, Eugene. I'm sorry. 
I, I was just going to say, I mean, I, I think it is retaliation. I think uh, mm-hmm. uh, audiences have retaliated and said that, oh, I don't want to support EA, that there's too many issues with this game, which I think a lot of the issues that, you know, don't come from the actual game itself, but really from the other reactions of other people on the Internet, specifically uh, people on Reddit who have never actually played the game, but because their voices were so loud, um, mm-hmm. people that were kind of on the fence about buying the game, they're saying, well, no, uh, people hate this game, people hate EA, so, you know, I'm going to follow suit as well. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, uh, I'm still not convinced that people are just avoiding this game. Uh, you got to think there's all the sales that have been coming out on and on all the games in general recently, and there's just so many shooters that have been out. Could people be tired of it? One, now I know it's Star Wars, so that kind of deducts from that point. But another thing is, like, by Christmas, you're still going to have the parents buying for their kids, and they're going to buy Star Wars over Call of Duty because it's viewed as the less intense version. You know what I mean? Well, sure. Yeah, and the movie is coming out as well, which definitely will help boost it. Well, I was mm-hmm. going to say, I think the holdouts will give in after they see Episode Eight. Yeah, yeah there, then there's supposed to be a price drop they've announced uh, the week that uh, The Last Jedi comes out. Yeah, and you know the great thing about this though is that you know the internet and especially social media. I mean, nobody's ever made a decision without all the facts from there. So <laughs> it's I, I think it's just getting people getting riled up, and it, like Eugene, you said, it's the loudest voices dominating the conversation right now. It's kind of like cable news. Um, mm-hmm. Whoever's loudest wins. So and that's what we're seeing. But I think, you know, it'll settle. And I think after the movie comes out, you're going to see sales start to spike for this game. I mean, I, I've honestly, I'm going to go ahead and call it that, you know, we'll, we'll wait till for a couple of years. But I think we just uh, lost a Star Wars video game for a long time. I don't, I don't think we're going to see a, a Star Wars video game for a long time because of this. Because uh, now that DA, EA, uh, not EA, but now that Disney holds, uh, uh, has the rights to the titles and everything that... Mm-hmm. They're gonna see what happened with Battlefront Two, and they're gonna say, "Uh, eh, well, we don't, we don't want to put our, uh, you know, we don't, put, we don't want to give up the license. We don't want to, you know, any well, negative yeah, towards Star Wars." So yeah, he has see. the license for ten years, though. Do they? they? Yeah, they bought a ten-year uh, li- license exclusivity with Star Wars. Uh, the okay. Year, the year before Episode Seven came out, so it would have been starting in 2014. So they have it for a while, and they have a game in development currently from Respawn that's Star Wars. So. And I'm interested to see what the Titanfall people do with Star Wars. Really interesting. It would be interesting, yeah. But, yeah, for sure. But I think there'll be some hesitation, and and I I would hate to see them not invest as much in the development of these types of games because kind of people had a fit and refused to support it. By by all accounts, I, and for me, the the second game is better than the first. It's is it a complete game? No, and I understand why it's getting some mediocre, mediocre reviews. But I still think it's fun. I have a good time with it. So that's just me. Yeah. Anything else, guys? No. no uh, so. right. Not not on my front. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have anything on my screen either to cover, so uh, we're going to move on to new releases, and that's going to do it for news. So, Graham, take it from here. Okay, so just like last week, this week's majority of new releases are coming at us from our friends of the Nintendo Switch. But we do have some releases for the other consoles, so let me tell you what will be coming your way. So for PS4 owners, we have three new titles, two of which will share its release with the Xbox One, and the third is a PSVR title. Now for that PSVR title, I'm talking about one that will give you the opportunity to hang out in virtual hell. And that game is Doom VFR. I won't tell you what the F stands for, but VFR. And this game will be released on December the 1st. Now, the other two titles for the PS4 are Black Mirror and Skyforce Reloaded. Both these titles will be released for PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, Black Mirror will see its release for both consoles on the 28th, while Skyforce Reloaded will first be released on the ps4 on the 28th and then on december 1st for you xbox one owners now for the xbox side of things you will be getting two more new releases those releases are soma and blue angels acrobatic or sorry aerobatic flight simulator 
Now, both these titles will release on the 1st of December. So now I got that out of the way, let's move on to Nintendo's hybrid console. For the Nintendo Switch, you will be able to get these titles. You can purchase the Resident Evil Revelations Collection, which consists of Revelations Part 1 and 2, or you can buy each individual part. So you have three options, and those options will be available to you on the 28th. Now, moving on to the 30th, you will be able to get Siberia, Star Ghost, a Neo Geo title, which is called World Heroes. So, and then to end off the, your week, uh, on the 1st, you will get Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And that will be available at the beginning of the month on the 1st. And that's all I have for deals. What's next? Eugene, right. this is your time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> deals. Yeah, so let's talk about some deals. So let's cover first uh, PlayStation Plus because we... Uh, for we only have a few days now left in November, so you need to make sure to pick up these these titles uh, free through PlayStation Plus. So uh, for the month of November, Worms Battlegrounds, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, and R Type Dimensions, Dungeon Punks, and Broken Sword Five. Uh, we also have for Xbox Live Gold uh, for November. You have Trackmania Turbo, uh, Tales from the Borderlands, which I believe goes through December fifteenth. Nights into Dreams and Deadfall Adventures. And today, uh, Microsoft announced the games with gold for December. So starting December 1st, uh, you'll be able to, for the Xbox 360, which is also backwards compatible, Child of Eden, which goes through December 15th. And then from December 16th through the 31st, Marlo Briggs and the Mask of Death. Have you guys ever heard of this game before? No, no, I've never heard of this game, but you'll be able to check it out next month because it will be free. Through you have nothing to lose, though, nope. except your nothing time. to lose, nothing to lose. Uh, and then for Xbox One, so Steve, I know you're a fan of Warhammer End Times. Uh, this will be free from the first to the 31st. You do play Warhammer, right? I think you talked yes. about it before. Yeah, so uh, Warhammer End, End Times will be free for the Xbox One. Uh, and then Back to the Future, the game, the 30th anniversary edition from December 16th through the 15th. Um, you'll be able to get that for free. So uh, I'm sorry, Des December 16th through January 15th, you'll be able to get Back to the Future to the game. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. So now let's talk about Cyber Monday. So Cyber Monday, which begins tomorrow and then also announced uh, Walmart will continue their Black Friday sales um, through the end of Monday. So be sure that if there's anything you, that you didn't pick up, uh, you still have the chance with Walmart. Um, just a few call outs for Cyber Monday. You can still p pick up a PlayStation 4 one terabyte gaming console for $199 with most retailers. Uh, and then also um, the Xbox uh, One S 500 gigabyte console for $189 still at all retailers. But a call out, shout out to Target. Um, you get a $25 gift card as well. So purchase console for $189 and then get a $25 for free. So that's pretty good. Uh, if you need to re-up your PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold, you'll be able to do uh, the PlayStation Plus for a year for $39.99 through Amazon and GameStop. And then also the 12-month Xbox Live Gold, you'll be able to get for $49.99 for 12 months. Uh a few console bundles that will be available, X, Xbox One S 500 gigabyte, uh, Minecraft Complete Ad Adventure Edition will be 229 229 through Amazon. Uh, the Forza Horizon 3 Hot Wheels bundle will be 229 as well. Uh, the Battlefront 1 bundle at GameStop, I believe that's a one terabyte for 229 And then a Madden NFL bundle at GameStop for 229 as well. Um, you can get any of those bundles plus a free game at Microsoft. Uh, so if you go on the Microsoft Store online, you'll be able to get any of those consoles, uh, bundles, plus another free game. So that's a pretty good deal. So, that is a good uh, deal. Yeah, a free game, uh, $229. Uh, and then check, if you have not gotten a Nintendo Switch, a bunch of retailers. I've been seeing a bunch of retailers. I, uh, Whenever I was out, out and about on Black Friday, I saw tons of Nintendo Switches. So be looking for out for the Nintendo Switch. And then also the SNES Mini uh, is reported to being out. Uh, out and about in store, so be sure to be looking out for that. Uh, the Xbox One X is also in stock. I saw several on those, but of course, no sales on that yet. Uh, Four ninety nine, but I mean, you guys have heard all of us talk about it, how great it looks, and everything. That um, definitely worth the purchase if you're able to find one. 
Uh, you can get the Sony PlayStation 4 Pro one terabyte gaming console for three forty nine. Uh, not only at GameStop, but you can get the limited edition White Destiny two bundle at Walmart for three ninety nine, and then at three forty nine at Best Buy. So let's talk about a few games. And of course, there's going to be tons of games on sale, but let's talk about uh, some of the bigger ones. So Destiny 2, if you have not picked up Destiny 2, it will be $50 at GameStop, Best Buy, and Walmart. Evil Within 2. Have any of us, any of us played the Evil Within 2? How do we like it? I, I know just, some of you yeah, has it. But I just I started it. it. Um, I have not very, gotten very far because I kind of got into South Park around that mm-hmm. time. And then... Oh. All the multiplayer games came out, so I, I'm going to go back to it. But I'm really excited to play it. Yeah, I heard it's a good mix between a uh, uh, kind of Resident Evil. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, 25 bucks can't go wrong with that. Uh, FIFA 18, 27 dollars through GameStop and Walmart. Uh, Madden NFL 18 for 27 dollars. Shadow of War, which I know Steve uh, saw on Xbox, you're playing a lot of Shadow of War. 25 dollars uh, at Walmart and GameStop. Uh, NBA 2K18, $27. Uh, South Park, the Fractured, Fractured But Whole for $40 at Walmart and Best Buy. Uh, Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus for $25 through GameStop and Best Buy. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about Nintendo. Batman, the Telltale series for $20 at GameStop. Has Been Heroes uh, for $10 available at GameStop. Uh, Minecraft Story Mode Complete Adventure for $34. Rayman Legends Definitive Edition for $20 at GameStop, uh, GameStop and Best Buy. Uh, RBI Baseball 17, Tyler's number one <laughs> baseball game. No. <laughs> uh, $20. $20 uh, available at Best Buy and GameStop. And, of course, uh, check out the uh, stores for uh, Nintendo and uh, Xbox and PlayStation 4. They, they have their Cyber Monday deals, which they're very comparable to the Black Friday special, so saw a bunch of games there uh kind of the new releases like wolfenstein uh south park for about 41 dollars um the same sales that were going on black friday so that's continuing through cyber one day so make sure you hit up those e-shops as well uh did did you guys have anything to add uh with deals nothing that i saw no okay nothing stood out for me yeah nothing yeah cyber monday is nothing too special anyway after black friday especially yeah yeah all right, cool. Let's head over, uh, Steve. What uh, discussion questions do we have? All right, we have a few. We have uh, Brian Richland with, with the success of the SNES and NES classics, what system would you like to see given a cha- or given a classic system, and what games would you want on it? Well, wasn't there a rumor or is it official that they're coming out with a GameCube one? It'll happen. It's bound to happen. Uh, I yeah. don't know. I don't know. That... That was my answer. <laughs> um, I, I would love to see the GameCube be either get a classic like the SNES classic or even just a working like emulator on the Switch where I can play Super Mario Sunshine, Luigi's Virtual Mansion. Console. Yeah. Yeah. And I want those games. Well, and they so just missing... came out with like an adapter or attachment for the Switch, right? Where you can hook GameCube games controllers up to it right well so... it was the uh it was the gamecube adapter that was for the wii u um it was kind of an accident they said they took it away um to where it would work with the newest pat with the newest update and players found out and then nintendo took it down they said it was an accident so they didn't mean to do it so at this moment maybe they didn't need to do it but you think if they're coming out with virtual console which they're supposed to be early next year or sometime next year then that seems like the perfect opportunity to have that adapter and be able totally. to go GameCube controllers. Oh, yeah, but totally. maybe they're kind of leaving it open, right, for if they do come out with the the classic or whatever like that. But there's no way they're going to do the GameCube before they do the 64. No. That just chronologically, chronologically does make sense, right? So it's probably a while down the road before we would see GameCube. So I would say we'll see a 64 one first. Um but as far as his question goes, like, but besides those two, there's really nothing that really comes to mind. So I, and I think they'll probably stop at GameCube because then you're running up to like newer systems, which some people still might have, right? Mm-hmm. Sure, but is there any non-Nintendo systems you guys want, like a Dreamcast? Yeah, classic, I was actually or... gonna say that. So uh, I'll put in my two cents about the N64 though, and the. Uh, GameCube is, I don't think it'll happen, especially with the GameCube, but the N64, 
Um, if you think about it, the majority of the good games for the in 64 are rare games, and rare is owned by Microsoft. Oh yeah. Uh, so I don't. I I really don't see an N64 happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if if they do, I'll be extremely surprised. And if they do, then uh, I don't think there'll be many games on it. I don't uh, just because of the cost um, of those games. They're they're they still sold on. They're still being sold on the Wii U shop. Um, and then to virtual console, like Graham was saying earlier, I think uh, um, if they're going to be charging fifteen to twenty dollars for those games on the virtual console, why? you know, make this bundle system. And plus those file size, sizes are a little bit larger too, you know, mm-hmm. than the SNES and NES games. But mm-hmm. I would like to see Dreamcast personally. Uh, now that Sega's kind of out of the game, uh, uh, when it comes to consoles, uh, a Dreamcast one, there's a lot of uh, underrated and uh, forgotten titles on the Dreamcast, like uh, the original Shenmue, which I don't know who owns the rights to that, Microsoft or Sony or whoever, um, but Shenmue, Soul Calibur, the original uh, Soul Calibur, Jet Set Radio. Uh, Sonic yeah. Adventure, Power Stone, uh, Res- Resident Evil, um, Code Veronica X was also awesome. Um, Power Stone, Fantasy Star Online. There's there's a ton ton of games on the uh, Sea Man, Sea mm. Man. If you guys have never played Sea Man, uh, Echo the Dolphin, games like those, I would like to see. Uh, I think Dreamcast would be a, a nice nice console for them to make. Yeah, I don't see PlayStation making one because they have a lot of their PlayStation 2 games and I think some PlayStation 1 games on their uh, uh, PlayStation Store already right. as a virtual console title. That's streaming, yeah. So, yeah. Or, yeah, PS Now, I think. So I, I don't see it happening because I think maybe an N64 and then, yeah, one of the two Sega consoles would be the only ones. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd like to see Nintendo keep going. Uh, no need for Xbox, old Xbox ones because they're doing backwards compatibility now like, with yeah. the yeah. original as well so a game no boy for that. i didn't even think that yeah well i was yeah. thinking game i was thinking game boy but it doesn't like the ds or the 3ds have most of those games yeah but you know it'd be really cool to have like a handheld device with all these preloaded games on it yeah i think that'd be awesome mm-hmm. i think that yeah that would be cool yeah. all, right. all right what else so, next question comes from Dylan Anderson. Since the season is here, what games are you hoping to have under the tree this year, if any, and why? Man, I, I'll go first. I, I can't think of anything else that I really, really want, maybe Assassin's Creed, but what I really want if I'm going to get like gaming stuff is like Xbox the gift cards so I can <laughs> get like Sea of Thieves and Far Cry and Red Dead when those come out. So that that would be my well, answer. Well, I'll tell you what would be well one of the greatest Christmas gifts that I could get would either be the SNES Classic or the NES Classic, <laughs> or both. Both would be amazing. But you know, if I had to choose one, well, that'd be tough. Because I I know they're gonna be made available next year, so it's not like the biggest thing. But I would really love to play an SNES Classic on Christmas Day. Yeah. What about you, Eugene? Uh, you know, I I don't have a lot of games that I would a lot of games that I would ask for. You know, if I, if I want a game, I'll probably pick it up myself. But you know, I usually appreciate more. Um, you know, give me an Xbox Live subscription. You know, or PS uh, PS Plus. You know, extend yeah. out on that so I don't have to pay a monthly fee or you know worry about that one time a year where I have to drop fifty or sixty bucks. So I always mm-hmm. appreciate that or appreciate a nice uh, um, gift card. So like you, Tyler, so I can you know pick what I want or buy the Usually it's DLC I use them for. You know, I'll, I'll yeah. buy the game and then, you know, the DLC that, oh, I don't really want to spend $10, but, you know, if I have a 10 or $20 Xbox card, I'll go ahead and pick it up. So yeah. it, I always yeah. like subscription cards or gift cards. I always yeah. like those. I actually use, I usually use my rewards points money uh, for yeah. DLC. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, go, I'm kind of saying I'm right with you. Steve, how about you? Uh, yeah, because I wasn't expecting to have the Xbox One X this early. I didn't buy Assassin's Creed because I was waiting for it to come uh, for when I had the Xbox One X. And since I already asked for it and then bought the Xbox One X after, I'm waiting on Assassin's Creed. And I really want it because I I heard it looks absolutely beautiful on it. And I heard it's one of the best Assassin's Creed since 2, which has me so excited. 
But other than that, I'm really looking forward to uh, like movies more than anything or socks because <laughs> I never think to buy socks until I need them and it's nice to, <laughs> I to love not have to worry about fresh it. Fresh pair of socks. Nothing better <laughs> putting on a brand new pair of socks. Yeah. But on a side note too, besides video games, uh, chocolate orange. That that and a video game or something like that, that would be an amazing combination. Man, you're, you're tough, Graham. Uh, <laughs> I, I just I bought a chocolate <clears throat> orange last yeah. week. Socks and a chocolate orange, and you <laughs> made your way to Graham's heart. And, uh, yep. I'm a right. simple guy. <laughs> all, right. all right. Well, just one more question comes from okay. Anthony Dennis. It says, uh, "What game are you look or what game are you most looking forward to next year?" Hmm. Next year. Any show nineteen? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> we know. And oh. I never got a chance to play it. I. I'm really looking forward to playing that one and exploring everything that it's got to offer and spending like my weekends hanging out with people on a virtual pirate ship and going after booty or whatever. Mm-hmm. Sounds fun to me. Yeah, that, that game's up there for me, but so my answer, I'm going to qualify my answer. I'm going to say Red Dead 2 until Halo 6 is inevitably announced. Because I think that game's coming next October. But I think uh, you're right. Yeah, I think. Uh, but for now, since it's not announced and we haven't heard anything on it, I'm going to say Red Dead 2. Have we heard anything on Elder Scrolls? Or that no. a ways down mm-hmm. yet? I think I think we're at least. I think 2019, the next Elder Scrolls yeah. will drop. I think they'll I think they'll announce it this year. Yeah. And I think it'll be Do ready you know? next. Because the last two years they haven't announced anything that wasn't coming out that year. Uh, I'm. I mean, I, I think they will. I think, if, or a game like Skyrim that I think they're going to give a little bit of time. Yeah. Well, I'm I mean, saying, will, will they? Yeah. I mean, they, they got to get people like, excited. Sure. But that strategy worked with Fallout Four. That was an amazing. It did. Yeah. And yes. People, people keep talking about it to this day. So. Yeah. Just think about and how, they, they how probably much excitement. Yeah. Go ahead, and and well, I'll I'll just finish real quick. Like for example, let's use Cuphead. So Microsoft revealed Cuphead in what 2014, <laughs> and all these people were so excited for it, and then it's like it's kind of out of mind, you know. Mm-hmm. You haven't heard anything about the game. You keep hearing it exists, or like Last Guardian on Sony's side. Well, I would say and, too. Another comparison would be Death Stranding. Like, are yeah, we? Yeah. Are we going to be tired of hearing about that by the time it comes out? And be like, okay, maybe I'll get this. I mean, what do you think is a realistic time frame for that game to be released? I think you're looking at 2020. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that could be maybe 21. Game. I think 20. I I don't. I think we'll see it whenever the next console is announced. Yeah. Personally, yeah. And I, I think it'll be like PS5. I I think it'll be next generation. Mm-hmm. I think so too. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Anyway, sorry, but. Uh, how about you guys? What are you looking forward to most? I'll go ahead and go. Uh, I'm going to agree with you, Tyler. Definitely at the top of my list is uh, uh, Red Dead 2. I'm very excited for that. Uh, I I personally, I'm not a huge fan of Rockstar games. Uh, L.A. Noir is something I want to pick up for this year since it mm. re-released. Uh, but I never really liked Grand Theft Auto. And I know that's an unpopular opinion, but I never got into it. I know it's a fantastic game and everything. I'm just not into it. But And I, I kind of felt the same way going into Red Dead 2. I'm like, yeah, it's just another Rockstar game. But, uh, man, that, that game got me hooked. Um, I, I want to go back into it, back into that Western world, uh, open world scenario. So um, I'm excited for that. I'm also excited for Nino Cooney, which comes out in January. I've already pre-ordered that. And then uh, uh, Far Cry. Far Cry 5. Okay. I'm excited for that as well. So, I know that's more than one game, but uh, yeah. Red Dead yeah. at just the top. one Eugene, Red, one game. Red Dead, Red Dead is at the top. So I'll throw in real quick before I turn it over to Steve. Uh, honorable mention for me would be the Spider-Man game on PlayStation. Really you think that would come out? Sure. I do. I, didn't they say yeah. it does? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I think pretty, so. I'm pretty it, sure it, they, it's been delayed long enough. It's supposed to be early 18, actually. I thought it was January or February. So, Same with God of War. It and God of yeah, War. I was just going to say God of War. Mm-hmm. And God of War will be great, too. I look forward to that as well. But that, that Spider-Man game just... Man, when they showed the gameplay, it looked a lot like the, the Batman Arkham games. 
And I, oh, yeah. I absolutely love those games. So I, I'm really looking forward to that. Anyway, Steve, what are you looking forward to most? Well, what I'm most looking forward to next year, if it comes out, because it says 2018, is Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm uh-huh, waiting 10 years that. for this game. <laughs> I need it. But of the games I'm sure are coming out next year, of course, Red Dead, Far Cry 5. Uh, I'm really excited for uh, Monster Hunter Worlds. I'm, I'm, I'm worried a bit just because I haven't seen too much on it. But those games are very fun, especially with friends. Um, so I'm hoping you guys pick it up and play together. Oh, but... so actually next month, Steve, Monster Hunter Worlds, the beta is opening up, I saw. So I'll, I'll definitely play that with you. I, mean, I love mm-hmm. Monster Hunter, and I'm glad mm-hmm. that it's coming to both PS4 and Xbox One. So I'll, I'll definitely uh, be in that beta. So next month you'll be able to play it. Yeah, and then Ninu Kuni too, I'm excited for. But Red Dead Redemption is my guaranteed one. But I, I really do hope Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out next year because I've been... I play those games like one and two once a year. <laughs> so let me let me throw out two titles that I'm not sure any of us was thinking of just now, but we were all really excited for E3. Anthem. What? That's is, next year? Anthem is next year. So that's, I'm really, I, I just want to see more, but from what we saw, it looks awesome. Yeah. And I was just thought of one too, yeah. uh, Tyler. Go ahead. Uh, it was a new Ori game. Oh yeah, yes. Will of the Wisps. Will of the Wisps. Yep. Yep. Because I then, will buy that one day one and tear through it. And then one other that I know I was really excited for. I think uh, some of you guys were too. Is Skull and Bones. Oh yeah. Oh, you think that'll come out next year? It's supposed to. And Ubisoft is making that right. Yeah, so it'll come out in 2024. But it, it's supposed <laughs> to be 2018. I mean, it, it has at least three delays left in it. Yeah. So and I haven't heard anything on it. So. I'd be really surprised. Yeah. Well, they need to go ahead and announce the next South Park game for 2018, and then we'll get into <laughs> Yeah. So. But, but yeah, I, I totally forgot Skull and Bones. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right about that. That game looks so much fun, and I cannot wait to play it. it it's It'll be kind of perfect. If it comes out in the fall and doesn't delay, it'll kind of be perfect timing because we'll kind of, I think, we'll be sort of see Thieves out by then. And... It'll be kind of like that, but just much more realistic and better graphics and all that good stuff. So, really looking forward to that game. And mm-hmm. I'm sure there's more that we're forgetting. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's, will, there's tons of games. We tons. will almost inevitably see a new Battlefield next year. Because that's pretty much every other year. As Battle, uh, yeah, Battlefield yeah. one whole year last now. Last year, so. yeah. Huh. So, what about a way out? Hmm. The, oh. That's one where you're in prison and you're breaking out of prison. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, like yeah, the yeah, two yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. break out different ways. And yeah. you have to play a co op, right? Yeah. That was that yeah. one. Yeah, that game actually looks really fun. I'm just not sure how much replayability is in it. But mm-hmm. I think for like a first playthrough and maybe a second, that looks really fun to play with a friend. So. But yeah, there's, I'm sure there's games we're not thinking of that'll be coming yeah. at that, oh, yeah. that are coming. Kirby, Yoshi, I'm ex- kind of a little mm-hmm. bit excited yeah, for those. Yeah, we didn't even really yeah, mention Dead. much for Nintendo. But but we'll talk a lot of Nintendo next week, everybody, when we do our Game Awards predictions. Totally. So, but uh, by the way, just real quick, Graham, me and Graham were talking about this earlier tonight. So, as a precursor for next week, I guess I have an issue with um, Mario Kart 8 being nominated for awards this year. Me too, kind of. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Because is it going to win? Maybe, maybe not. Because like Graham said, Odyssey is nominated in some of the same categories. And Mario Kart 8 is not going to beat that. But give the honor of being nominated to someone else. You know, if Mario Kart 8 was made last year, great. But adding another word onto the title and putting it out for a new system doesn't make it new again. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like I said, when we were talking about it, I was looking at it, well, let's just nominate, like, Halo 3. Or Doom. Why not? Yeah, Doom. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, you know, Skyrim, yeah. Remastered. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, why, why stop there? Let's just, you know, go all the way back. Let's let's nominate Let's nominate the E.T. game from Atari. <laughs> why not? Well, so, I kind of, I, I kind of, I see why people want to nominate it. You know, um, I, I don't, I, it definitely shouldn't be Game of the Year, but... You know, if it's in, if it's in the contender for racer, which I don't think it touches. It's, Forza, it's not. Personally. It's, not yeah. it's not. It's not, not in that category. Not 
Okay, it's just overall. Which is funny because didn't it win best sports slash racer the year before? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it, it did. did. So <laughs> repackaged, it's no longer even in the top six. That I don't know, but so who has it on their list for game of the year? I mean, it's, is on, that the it's game in, it's or in yeah, it's game awards. It's in two different categories. Uh, oh, you know it's yeah. gonna win then. You know it's gonna win. Well, I know at least one of the categories. I think Odyssey is also a nominee. So both, maybe not. Both of them, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so Odyssey is probably under a uh, platform for Aang. One is best family game, I know. Yeah. Uh, okay. and, and one I is best multiplayer. One, I think the other one is best multiplayer. Yeah. So, are you going to tell me that there's there aren't six multiplayer games from this year that are better than that? Yeah. That are yeah. new. That are actually new and actually came out this year. So I mean, I, personally, I'm not, I'm not knocking the game. It's fun. I have played it. It's fun. But it didn't come out this year. Yeah. No, I definitely, I definitely see what you're saying, but mm. I mean, that's why I don't, you know, nothing against the game awards, but I kind of put them as second tier of, you know, most gaming sites and journalist sites because it, just after the last few years, the things that we've seen, you know, from the game awards, like it's nice to have, like, a, I mean, it's the only show that's available, you know, on TV that where they have this huge event, you know, giving out awards on stage and things like that. So that's definitely, um, something you give is it spike is it spike tv that does no it? they stream it now it's all oh, they stream yeah, okay it's all so streamed. uh you know I, i'll give them credit for that you know for just having it in general mm-hmm. but uh i mean we saw the splatoon the splatoon debacle where it won you know first person shooter of the year or, or shooter uh best shooter of the year and then or was it best multiplayer i forgot which one that was best multiplayer uh, yeah best multiplayer and then uh or, the whole yeah, the whole multiplayer. kojima the whole kojima uh, like twenty minute segment that they did, you okay. know, honoring him, which he is a great developer, but mm-hmm. um, great producer. But yeah, I I don't I don't hold the Game Awards, you know, on top tier. And they do some good stuff. So I can't remember his name right now. And Eugene, I know you'll quickly correct me, but the Nintendo, the head of Nintendo that passed away. Uh yeah yeah yeah. They, I, I it can't. A, okay. yeah, it was Miyamoto. A very, yes. No 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 no. no. Um, yeah, no. Sorry. Oh yeah. Ne- uh, yeah yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Iwata. Yeah, we'll get Tori Iwata. Yes, Iwata. thank yeah, you. Yes, for you. It was a really nice tribute to him on that show. It was actually a really nice tribute, I thought. And they brought um, Reggie out, and, you know, it was very well done. But I guess the only other thing I had kind of have an issue with of it is that it's done on the same weekend as the PlayStation Experience in the same location. And, like, not even as an Xbox fan, but just in general, like, I'd like to see a little bit more representation from all three companies not just sony and nintendo but that's just me it's just you <laughs> yeah but i just think i just think it's fair i mean it, yeah you know because i mean xbox you know they they have their their good things they have their flaws but they deserve to be in the conversation too when it comes to those uh, things so how much how much do you think uh I think one one reason is too, you know, like because Jeff Keighley, he's a huge PlayStation fan. He hosted it one year, and then you know Kojima has close relations with a uh, uh, PlayStation as well. And then Nintendo, you know, they're like, hey, we're gonna show first gameplay footage of um, Breath of the Wild. You know, that's the first time we got to see it in action a few years back. So um, I, I don't know how much how much Microsoft, you know, puts into it. Or, you know, do they show an interest in showing anything or doing anything for it? Yeah, maybe they feel like it's no point, really, because they're already, like, the odd man out. Yeah, I don't know. So, yeah. Any other questions? No, that was it for questions. All right. So, let's get out of here. Pretty short episode this week. Uh, Sorry about that. There just wasn't a whole lot going on news-wise. Not our fault, guys. Yeah. New. So we'll be back next week. We're going to be starting our December giveaways next week. So make sure you get your questions in, everybody. And I think we talked about next week. Don't hold us to this, but we talked about maybe some Xbox Games Pass or something along those lines for the first giveaway. So, uh, and we'll be doing giveaways every single week throughout December uh, up through Christmas week. So with that said, everyone, uh, for Eugene, Graham, and uh, Steve, I am Tyler saying thank you so much for joining us for episode number 71. We'll be back next week with episode number 72. Until then, everyone, stay safe, have a great week, and play some great games. We'll talk to you next week. All right, see you guys, everyone. Bye.